Hey guys, welcome back to Bombay TV. Guys, so we're going to check in out an amazing video. This is going to be all I mentioned in the Bible. Guys, this is something that I don't know if it's true, but let's check it out. So guys, let's get straight into this. Bible. Allah. We say Allah. Okay, so that's God to the Muslims. Some say it's not even the God of the Christians and so on. It's just a God. Some even said it's a moon God. But let us now look at the linguistic of the word Allah. It in itself is the beauty of Islam. Because the word in Arabic doesn't mean God. Just in case you thought it did, it doesn't. Because we have a word in Arabic for the word in English, God. It's called Elah. Elah, God. God, Elah. That's the word. But when we speak about the one and only God, the one that's to be worshipped, the God of Adam, the God of Abraham, and the God of Moses, God of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and the God of Muhammad, peace be upon him, we're talking about essentially the only... Guys, when he mentioned... Adam, Moses, Abraham. He didn't say peace be upon him, but when he mentioned Jesus, he said it. Like, I really don't know why the peace be upon him is there, but I, I don't want to ask. So why is there a peace be upon him after adding the name? Like, but when he mentioned Prophet Muhammad, he still had peace be upon him. Like, tell me why it's there. Like, after the name, you add a peace be upon him. Like, I want to know. Guys, let's get back. A God that's worthy to be worshipped. No other God. Now, what would be the proof for this? I, I realize that we have a lot of detractors who will say, no, 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 it's not true, I don't believe it. Let's uh, get a proof from the English translation of the Bible. That's a good place to start. Around the earth, there are many hotels and motels. And almost every one of them that you go to, there's a drawer beside the bed that when you open it up, you'll find a book in there and you'll take it out. Now, what is that book? And you already know the answer. It's the Bible. It's the Gideon publication of the King James Version of the Bible. The Gideons are very proud of it because they've translated it into so many languages. If you'll turn a few pages right in the beginning, you'll find examples of the translation to Chinese and Korean and into Urdu, the language of Pakistan. You'll find it into Tamil. You'll find it translated into Afrikaans language, which happens to be the first. And the second language translated to is Arabia, Arabic. And there is an example of each one of these languages from the verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And you know it very well. For God so loved the world. That's how it begins. And if you look in the Arabic language, the example that they gave in that Bible, it says Allah. Allah. That's what it says. For Allah so loved the world. So if it's not the same God, then why? All over the entire earth, everywhere I go, I find this exact same word being used in the Bible of the Christians. Now you might say, well, well, uh, what about the Old Testament? Well, just in case you would like to check it out, you can obtain a copy of this from our website. It's called The Beauties of Islam. Let me spell it out for you. It starts with BeBeautiesOfIslam.com. Go there and see for yourself. The example is right there. Page one of the book of Genesis, of the very beginning of the Quran. Page one has 17 verses. <clears throat> and there's the word Allah. Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha. 17 times. So just as it's the God for the children of Israel in Arabic language, and it's the God for the Arabs who are Christians, it's also the same God for the Muslims. The word is Allah. Why Allah? Why is it important to have this particular word and why don't we have it in English? 
Now, I want to come to the etymology of the word. It comes from the word Elah, and Elah means God. But God is defined as what? Anything that's worshipped, whether it be something you can see or you don't see, something you can touch or not touch, something that you can hear or not hear. A God could be anything. A God could be a rock, a stick, a stone, a bone. A God could be something that you can make with your hands. A God can be something you could use your imagination for. It could be a human being. A God could be anything. G-O-D, God, could be anything. But there is no word in English for Allah. So when you translate the word Allah to be God, you've actually diminished the meaning of Allah. That's why whenever you translate the Bible from English to Arabic, you need to use the word Allah instead of God with a big G, which now gives us a clue to the problem. In the English language, they only have one word, God, little g-o-d. It means something worshipped. It could be idols, images, pictures, statues. It could be human beings. It could be anything. This is God's, little g-o-d-s. But when you mean the God, you have to capitalize the G. You have to make a big G. Now, what happens if you're going to start the sentence with the word God? You have to make a big G anyway, don't you? So you wouldn't know if it was God, big God, or God, a little God, just any old God. You wouldn't know. Also, whenever you're speaking to someone, they can't see the letters. So when you say God... Which God? What God are you talking about? In Arabic, though, it's clear when you say Elah, okay, he's talking about a God. And Allah is an Elah. But he's also Al-Elah, the only Elah. And when you say Allah, this firms it up. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that you're talking about the one and only God. The word Allah in the Arabic language cannot be made plural. There can't be more than one. Okay, that perfectly fits the unique God of the believers because there's not more than one. He's only one. There's no God beside God. Second point is this. It can't be made female or male. There's no gender to the word. In Arabic, all the words have gender. All words have gender. But this particular word is only having gender because of the Arabic language, not because Allah has gender. I give you an example. It always says like Allah who. This means Allah he is. But when we say he, it's out of respect for Allah. Because Allah is without gender. Because he's not like his creation. Not male. Not female. Additionally, we find that the I, examples in Quran, for instance, when Allah is talking about himself, you'll find it says nahnu. Nahnu means we. And Allah refers to himself as nahnu. He also says khalakna. He says khalakna. What does that mean? He's saying that we created. And throughout the Quran you find Allah referring to himself as we, our, and us. And right away you're going to say, okay, if that's not plural, then what is? In fact, this is the royal we used by a king or a queen. When they're giving decrees. We have it in English too. So you can understand. The king says we decree the following. And he's talking about himself. It's the royal we. Now I thought about this quite a bit. And I was trying to think. How could I give a better example? After all most of us. Myself included. Never met a king. Never met a queen. And so I'm not really familiar with that usage. Although it's there. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So then in studying the English language, we find that it's true that we do that when we speak to someone directly. Watch this. When I say, for instance, this cup. <clears throat> okay. I would say, this is a cup. This is a cup of tea. I would say, this book is. I would say, those uh, artifacts are those are this is these are so I'm saying is and are did you catch this now these things are this is now when I speak to a human being how do I do this well I will say you guys all of you are all of you are A-R-E but when I speak to somebody directly do I say you is or you are 
I will say you are. Why? Simply because this is the respect, honor, and dignity that I'm giving. There's no plural there. When I say to you, you are my friend. You are a lovely person. But why am I saying are? Why aren't I saying is? You is my friend. You is a lovely person. Huh. You'll say, man, this guy doesn't know English language. And in fact, that's how we can understand this usage of we and our when Allah is talking about himself. This is the same as when I say I. I don't say I is, I say I am. And again, it's to show the, not plural, but rather the specific nobility, dignity, and honor that you give to the one who's speaking about himself and to the one he's speaking to. And in the same way, that's exactly what Allah is doing when he says Nahnu and Khalaqna and other examples throughout the Quran. So now what we've learned is that Allah's name itself is the perfect name for Allah. It is something that is so fantastic to describe who he is and who he isn't. The one and only God. There is none other like him. Nothing like unto him. Allah and at the same time, the dignity, the royalty, the honor that's due him is contained in his name. Not like anything else, not male, not female, and yet he is the all Allah, the only God. Guys, we are done. Uh, I kind of understand. Not a kind of. I understand his explanation. I actually makes sense. I want to say, but uh, okay, l l let's do this. The explanation makes sense. Like it, it makes sense. Like I understand it. But let's take this for instance. God's name is Allah. Okay, then you can call him the one true God. It's still the same thing as Allah. You can call him God. But you know who you're talking about. He is the God. The only God. So, since Allah means the only God, there's still, there's still a translation in English language calling him the only God. So, this will ask you who you worship. I worship the only God. Still the same thing as I worship Allah. So, but when he's Allah is especially the Bible, I bet you I don't know of that. And after this video, I'm checking it out. I'm checking it out. I wanted to pause and check it, but it will take me a long time. So I will check it out and come back to it. I'm talking about it in another video. But guys, just to like, just got my channel. I'll see you next time. Peace.